What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to ColoCraft Bushcraft. This is your first time here. My name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey trying to learn and develop bushcraft skills. Um, today's video, I'm really excited about it. It's actually a long distance collaboration with my buddies Grazy and James over at Northern Limits Bushcraft and Survival. We have each come together to give you our top five bushcraft and wilderness survival tips. Uh, these guys really know their stuff they have a lot of experience out in the field, so I really hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. guys so here are my five top bushcraft tips uh, number one is to define what bushcraft actually means to you um, there are 101 ways of doing everything that bushcrafters do uh, you don't have to be a bushcraft purist and do things the way that you know the likes of Ray Mears and guys like that do it find what works for you and stick with that you know your skills will build as you do more and more of this stuff so if to start with you know you're not 100% confident um, getting a fire going just from using sparks take a lighter it doesn't make any difference um, do some research read some books watch some instructional videos you know go on a course whatever it might be but find out what bushcraft means to you define how you want to do it um, you know you could go down the tactical route you could go down the purist route you could do a, a cross between the two it really doesn't matter it's all about what works for you so tip number one define your version of bushcraft Tip number two is to plan your trips ahead of time. Okay, get out a map, plan your route, think about the gear that you're gonna be taking. Do you know for a fact that it all works? Lay it out on the floor in front of you. If you're taking a tent for your shelter, have you set it up before? Do you know that you can do it quickly and efficiently? If you're planning to make a shelter when you're out there, are you certain that the place that you're going has the resources for you to be able to do it? Uh, think about things like food. How much food are you going to need? Where's your water source? Are you having to take water with you? Or if you're getting it when you're out there, how are you going to clean it? How are you going to filter it to make certain that it's safe to drink? Uh, think about the weather. Look at the weather forecast. What's the weather supposed to be doing? Do you have the appropriate clothing so that you're not going to get stuck? And really, really importantly, tell somebody else what your plan is. Tell somebody where you're going to be, how long it should take, so that if, God forbid, something does go wrong, there is somebody else out there who's expecting you and who will alert the authorities if you don't come back when you're supposed to. Tip number three. If you don't know how to already, get a compass and learn how to use it. Don't rely on mobile phones or satellite navigation because where you're going, you may not have a signal and you may come unstuck. Compass, really simple tool, really great to use. Get a compass, learn how to use it. Tip number four, get yourself a decent bushcraft knife. Keep it sharp, keep it clean. There isn't much out in the wild that you can't do with a good knife. Um, they don't have to cost the earth. Um, check out guys like Mora Knife, uh, Mora Nif and Castrum and stuff like that. You can get them relatively cheap and they are half decent knives. So get yourself a decent knife. Learn various different splitting techniques. You don't necessarily need all of the cutting tools under the sun. You don't necessarily need axes and saws and things like that. If you have a decent knife, you can get by. Keep it sharp, keep it clean, keep it dry, and it will save your life more than once. Tip number five, probably my most important tip, is to have fun. This stuff should be enjoyable. If you're out on a trip and you're not enjoying it, it's uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, just bail. Don't feel bad, just go home. If you're not enjoying it, don't do it. Not everyone in the world has to be a Les Stroud or a Bear Grylls and you know, go out for 12 days in the Arctic with nothing but a pair of shorts and a knife to see how long you can survive. For me, that's not what this is about. That's not why I started my channel. I started my channel because I wanted to get back to nature, to rewild myself a little bit and to learn how to use the natural resources that I have available to me without negatively impacting the environment. Bushcraft should be fun. If you're not having fun, just go home. I'm James from Northern Limits Bushcraft and Survival and I'm gonna take you through my five top tips for being in the wilderness. Now these are learned from my own experience or experience of others or what I've researched. 
but mostly through my own experience. So tip number one, always carry a backup way of starting fire. Don't rely on one method to start and fire. Always carry a backup, whether it be a ferrocerium rod or something like a lighter. And also think about backup tinder as well. So in the winter, I will carry um, a fatwood stick, which I will shave down to help me start fire, fire. Or I will take cotton wool buds that are saturated in petroleum jelly because they take a spark like that. So always have a backup method if your first, first method doesn't work. Secondly, tip number two, think about preparing your fire or firewood before sundown. Collect all your tinder and all your fuel logs together and have it all laid out before it gets dark. Myself, I made this mistake once where I tried to get a fire going during the dark and I was quite prone to injuring myself. Luckily I didn't, but I could have easily injured myself. So try and get the fire going before it gets dark. Try and obviously you have to prioritize shelter first, but then do your fire. But think about this early. Tip number three, carry equipment that either has multiple uses or lose unnecessary equipment. So what I mean by that is, is when you're in the wild, um, you don't really want to be having a lot of unnecessary equipment on your back. So that's why some people would think about multiple uses for that piece of equipment. It's just extra weight and the space in your rucksack could be used for other things, such as extra food. So lay out all your kit at home, like I do sometimes, and I think about how I'm gonna be using that kit when I'm out in the wilderness. And if it's something that I'm definitely not gonna use, I won't bring it. I'll use that space for extra food or extra water. Um, kits such as first aid kit might not be used, but that's safety equipment, so always carry safety equipment with you. That's a definite must. Okay, tip number four, research blade safety, such as axes, knives, and saws, okay, to prevent any unnecessary injury. That's a must. Um, you don't really wanna be cutting yourself, even minor or bad, out in the wilderness, because then you're prone to infection. Um, and it could be an early trip out of the woods for you. Okay, tip number five, Always think about water when you're going out, whether it be a water source or how you're going to make it safe to drink. So firstly, water source. I always try and go somewhere that's a fast flowing water source because there's less pollutants in the water and I know it's a little bit safer to drink. And making water safe to drink could be either a water filter that you can get online or in outdoor stores, um, or you could boil the water in your like billy can or a metal water bottle. Make sure it's onto a roll and boil before you, it's safe to drink. So those are my five top tips for being in the wilderness. Thank you very much, Alex. My name's Grazy and I'm... The Chief Instructor for Northern Limits Bushcraft and Survival. I hope you're all well today. I'll be very kindly asked by Alex to collaborate with them to give a bushcraft instructor's top five tips and tricks for the beginner bushcrafter. Let's get to it then, shall we? So, tip number one, bushcraft doesn't have to be expensive. What you need to think about is what you actually want to be able to achieve, what skills you want to uh, look for, and what kit you may need. You may want to consider buying something smaller and then start building your kit up as the more experience that you get. If you start off with a lot of expensive things and then you don't necessarily enjoy it or it's it's not a path that you want to take uh, with you then you've not spent uh, loads of money on it if you want to go down the traditional route some of it can be expensive because it's uh, a lot leather if you like yourself i'll go down the tactical route what i do is i buy it i trial it and then if i like it i'll keep it and then work on it and then build my kit up when i first started out i only started out with a few little bits and bobs and then i've then built me my kit up as my experience has grown. Don't go out and buy loads of expensive gear just because you may have seen it on YouTube, Instagram, whatever social media platform might have been, or somebody in real life. You don't want to have all the gear but no have no idea because you'll then start giving out the perception that you actually know what you're doing. People may start turning to you then and then if you if they ask you you'll have to then turn around and look a bit of a fool and say I don't actually know. Start small, 
get big. So, moving on to tip number two. Be prepared. Safety equipment is the most paramount equipment that you will ever take with you. First aid kit, maybe a wet warm kit as well. If you're going to go out on a, a, up the hills, go out in the wild, and you don't have the correct equipment, you are going to go man down. Are you going to wear thermal kit in the summer? Unlikely, because you'll get hyperthermia, meaning that your body core temperature is going to go above 37.5 degrees Celsius. Are you going to be wearing summer kit when it's wet and it's cold? No, you're not, because you'll suffer from hyperthermia thermia, which means when your body core temperature goes below 37.5 degrees celsius don't take any kit that is unnecessary it's going to be dead weight if you don't use it don't bring it what i do uh, is I, the day before i always lay my kit out on the ground i will then check it over if i know i'm going to use it i'll pack it if not it goes away i also try to think of multi-purposing as well can my kit be used for more than one thing my knife, for example, is part of my 10 seas of survivability. It's the most important thing that I will have because I can make friction fire with it. I can cut, I can process game for food. Uh, I also can use it to, to cut down and uh, make things. Tip number three, look after your kit. Your kit will look after you. Not that pigeon though. Your knife, keep it dry. Keep it sharp. A blunt knife is a lot more dangerous than a sharp knife. If you tear some of your clothing and your ten seasons of survivability, you've got your cotton seal needle and you'll have some thread as well. Sew it up. If your tarp or a tent or your poncho becomes damaged, you've got tape in there to make temporary repairs. What more can you ask for? And then repair it properly when you get home. If you damage your kit while you're out on the ground, keep it with you. Tip number four, know your own limitations. You wouldn't go and run a marathon without any training, would you? For a marathon runner, they would start with small distances and then would then build up on it until they got the 26.2 mile. And it's exactly the same with both bushcraft and survival. You have to be able to go out and learn the different skills and methods that's needed to be able to go and survive comfortably out in the wild. The more you go out and learn, the bigger your limitations will be. The physical fitness as it is a small part of it because if you want to go and hit the hills and then start doing some wild camps and tents, you, know, you still have to be able to get yourself across them hills. Yes, you might want to take your time doing it. However, if you take too much kit, it's going to weigh you down. You're going to burn more calories. You're going to become tired a lot, lot quicker. Well, physical fitness is part of them limitations. So is your so is your knowledge. The more bigger your knowledge, the bigger your limitation. And the more you go out and learn, yet again, them limitations grow. There's no pride in bushcraft. If you don't know something, go out and ask. The bushcraft community is very, very humble. There's many things that you can go out and learn. Go and check on YouTube. People like Dave Canterbury or Sean Kelly from Corporal's Corner. Northern Limits Bushcraft and Survival, or Colo Craft, for example. There's many, many different people out there where you can learn tips and tricks to build that arsenal for the outdoors. If you don't know, ask. Which brings us on to point number five. Practice. Practice does not make perfect. Practice makes you better. I'm no expert. I'm a servant soldier. I have been for many years. I've been doing bushcraft for many years however i still learn i still learn off uh, alex i still learn from from my assistant chief instructor uh, james padgett he's our primitive methods guy i'm more tactical he's more traditional he uses um, primitive methods i use modern methods but we learn off each other all of the time and then we practice the skills we've picked up off each other you're going to be safe if you practice and the safer you are the more comfortable and easier things are as well practice makes better go out and have some fun and then practice the skills you've learned and that's there we go ladies and gentlemen that is my top five tips and tricks for bushcraft beginners i hope you've all, all enjoyed that i've enjoyed making it thank you very much to alex for allowing me to do this collaboration with him and thank you for watching i'll see you next time well there you have it guys 15 brilliant tips for bushcraft and wilderness survival 
Um, I want to say a massive thank you to Grazy and James over at Northern Limits Bushcraft and Survival. Um, I can't actually take credit for this idea. This was all Grazy's idea. He is very generously he is very generously letting me use their footage as well, um, so that I can put a video out uh, on my channel. Uh, they will be putting a video together on their channel, so make sure you go and check them out on YouTube, on Instagram. Make sure you go and subscribe to them and follow them and all that kind of stuff. If you're new to my channel uh, and you enjoyed this video, please consider uh, hitting subscribe. Uh, it really does mean a massive amount to me and really helps the channel grow. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tips. I hope you find them useful. Uh, I will see you very, very soon in another video. Take care.